This is June the 5th, 2016. We are now entering another study session. This is lesson one from unit one, and it is entitled Judgment and Salvation. And that is from our Faith Pathway study manual. And uh, our lesson is entitled Maintaining the Good of the Earth. And if we are referencing this same uh, lesson one uh, from our standard lesson commentary, it is entitled The Day of the Lord. Our devotional reading is Isaiah the 25th chapter, verses 6 through 10. Our background scripture is Genesis 1, 1. Also, Genesis 2, verse 3. Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 2. And also, Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 4. And our printed passage is Zephaniah chapter 1, verses 4 through 6, and also verses 14 through 16, and also chapter 2, verse 3. Our lesson's aim is to learn that on the great day of the Lord, God, the creator of the universe, will punish those who have not repented and humbled themselves under his authority. Recognize the relationship between righteous living and one's responsibility to maintain the good found in God's created order, and then create a mechanism through which to repent or reaffirm your faithfulness to God. The purpose of our lesson is actually contained uh, in the key verse, which is Zephaniah 2 and 3, which reads, Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of of the Lord's anger. Now we want to entertain or address the biblical context of the ministry of Zephaniah. And it reads, Zephaniah's prophetic ministry occurred after the exile of the northern kingdom, Israel, which was the uh, coming together of the 10 tribes representing the northern kingdom and before the exile of the southern kingdom, Judah, which were the other two tribes of the whole of uh, the nation of Israel. Biblical scholars believe that Zephaniah wrote his book during the reign of King Josiah. Uh, this is affirmed in 2 Kings uh, chapters 22 and 23, and also in Second Chronicles chapters 34 and 35. And the meaning of his name was hidden by Jehovah, which the context says, as it appeared that God had been hidden during a lengthy period of moral lapse in Judah. Judah had slipped to levels of depravity previously seen in the northern kingdom. Now, in the course of our lesson, just in the biblical context itself and also in the background scripture, those scriptural references, there is a blessing just in those two entities of the lesson alone. First, in the biblical context, just the name of Zephaniah, which is translated, whom Jehovah hid. 
And the other blessing is King Josiah, which we will see later uh, in the lesson. But whenever there is a warning from the Lord uh, of punishment, uh, when that day of accountability comes, all of our actions have consequences. And before that day of accountability, the consequence of our actions come. God always sends a messenger. He always sends a warning. God always sends guidance and sends direction to remove the excuse that we use that we didn't know any better. Um, I, I didn't have uh, any counsel. I was not advised on that there was a better way. Uh, so as we look into the context of this lesson, we will see the mercy of God, the mercy of our creator, that before our just due comes, that end his never ending mercy, which is given to all generations, we will see that still he provides a way out so that we do not have to encounter the punishment that we are due. So uh, the other part that we want to lift is out of the background scripture. Genesis 1 and 1 and we are all familiar with this passage of scripture it says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The other background scripture is in Genesis two and three, verse three, which reads, then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. He set it apart a day of recognition and observation because in it, he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. Now, um, that in itself is rewarding because first of all, we recognize who the creator is and we identify who the creator is by the works of the creator. The other blessing in that is, is that the works are not incomplete. He had finished his works from the beginning of what we have associated with time. So from the beginning of time to what we are now entertaining as the end of time, which actually is not the end of time in reference to existence. It is the end of an age. It is the end of ourselves, the end of man's wicked, wickedness. So we realize that God's plan was executed. It was acted upon. He didn't just think it, but he brought it into being. And then he finished it. And when he finished it, he allowed time for not God's self, but he allowed time for us to reflect and to see and to recognize and appreciate what the creator had done. So he sanctified it. He set it apart so that we would recognize the power of God, the power of the creator. So we would identify with all that the creator had provided for us. And then we look at another part of the background scripture, which is Zephaniah 1 and 2. Here the scripture says, I will utterly consume everything from the face of the land, says the Lord. 
I will consume man and beast. I will consume the birds of the heavens, the fish of the sea, and the stumbling blocks along with the wicked. I will cut off man from the face of the land, says the Lord. Now, sometimes we, um, those that are believers as well as those who are non-believers, sometimes we allow ourselves to become angry, to be dissatisfied. Uh, many times we uh, share the same uh, emotions that we have affixed to God uh, because scripture tells us that God uh, becomes dissatisfied with our behavior, with our conduct, with our lack of appreciation for what God has provided for us. And so a lot of times as believers and non-believers, we uh, take the pride of ourselves and we become angry and we become upset with the fact that a merciful, a, a meek, a kind, a loving God, an understanding God would actually allow that deity, that presence to get to a point where it would become fed up with man's folly and then actually act, execute punishment. But look at our world today as we have allowed such as it is in our lesson with Judah and Israel, the Northern and the Southern kingdom that we have allowed the folly of man. We have allowed the desires of man to fester themselves in a manner in which now fear and discord is flowing through the land. And many are fearful of even going back and forth to work because we have allowed the activities of ourselves absent from the instruction of God to prevail in the land throughout the entire earth. So the creator of this dwelling of the earth has said that I am going to visit. I am going to consume. I'm going to consume the land that I created. I'm going to consume the creation that I put into the land that I created. Man, the beast, the fish. I'm going to consume the stumbling blocks, the wicked. I'm going to cut all of that, which is unlike what I made. And I'm going to remove it. And I am once again going to reclaim what I started out with. I looked at my creation and I said that everything that I made was good. But man has allowed my creation to become wicked, to become ill practiced and thought of. So therefore I am again going to come into my creation, recreate it again and remove all the elements that have destroyed it. So it is pretty much just like we as parents, those who are becoming parents, those who are in a position of authority, Many times as children, we do things that uh, warrant a uh, certain discipline. It warrants correction. It warrants direction. And so uh, sometimes it's escaped. So sometimes people in positions of authority and sometimes our parents will say, 
I'm going to get you for that when we get home. Uh, back in the day, our parents would not wait till they got home. They would settle the matter right there on the spot. But uh, I think the uh, children's agencies and support groups and stuff, uh, someone may actually be locked up for correcting their child, uh, which is something that has actually caused the dilemma that we have in our society today with the upraising, the upbringing of our children correctly. I didn't say to kill them. I didn't say to beat them to death. I just said they should be disciplined. But sometimes we would escape that act. And uh, when we finally got home, our parents would be in a different mind, a different state of mind, and we wouldn't get the punishment that time. And so then we would do something else that was out of character that needed to be corrected. And once again, we will escape the punishment. And uh, all of a sudden, we would do something that we considered was very minute. It was something that was, you know, something little, something that should have been overlooked. Uh, especially since I got away with those real big problems that I did. I got away with that big stuff that I should have been punished for, but now I just did something that I considered to be insignificant. It wasn't a big thing at all. But then all of a sudden, I got the whipping. I got the discipline of my life because it came all the way back from those other occasions that I should have been corrected. But it was overlooked for whatever the reason was. I escaped that punishment. But all of a sudden, something I considered to be insignificant, then I got the discipline that I escaped from those other occurrences when I should have been corrected. Now, our text, uh, beginning at uh, Zephaniah and the... Uh, chapter 1, and we are at verse 4. Uh, I'm reading from the NIV, and it says, I will stretch out my hand against Judah and against all who live in Jerusalem. I will cut off from this place every remnant of Baal, the names of the pagan and the idolatrous priest, those who bow down on the roofs to worship the starry host, those who bow down and swear by the Lord and who also swear by Molech, those who turn back from following the Lord and neither seek the Lord nor inquire of him. Now, again, Many times when we read the word of scripture and the interpretation of what the Lord has said as a result of our acts, we want to lift from this through the commentary uh, when it spoke of the worship of uh, the pagan gods, uh, Baal was lifted. Uh, also, we want to look in the commentary and it says this twofold call to judgment was a general call to all of Judah's inhabitants and a specific call to those civil, civil and religious leaders in Jerusalem who were not leading God's chosen people along the paths of righteousness. So it is focused towards Judah and Israel, the same time, those who live in Jerusalem. Uh, also, it is addressing those in civil and religious positions as leaders because they were misleading God's people into paths of unrighteousness and not righteousness. Um, there is a requirement upon us as leaders that 
we have been charged with the responsibility of making sure that the people who are under our leadership, that we are not forsaking them by leading them wrongly. Therefore, people also are punished because of unrighteousness, but God starts at the head and works his way down. Uh, many times we see the reverse. Those in position of authority, those are in position of leadership. Uh, a lot of times we see the uh, we see the cause or we see the act of correction and it will start from the bottom. Those who are not in position of leadership, but those that are at the top exclude themselves from correction and they begin to punish those to whom they have been charged to be an example for and to be in a position to provide proper leadership, guidance, and direction. They choose to, as we say, push or pass the buck. So therefore, they start off by ridiculing those who are following their example. And they choose to make the correction or the punishment on the people at the bottom instead of the people at the top. But God doesn't approach it in that manner. God approaches it by uh, correcting those that he has placed in positions to be leaders in character, to be leaders in practice, conduct, behavior, in establishing morals and values. Uh, and we are going to see this exemplified in the presence of King Josiah. Uh, this is going to be coming from 2 Kings. Uh, it starts at the 22nd chapter, but it goes on into the 23rd chapter. And we're going to review because, again, a lot of times people want to escape correction, discipline, punishment, consequences, accountability. They want to escape it by saying that they didn't know better. I didn't have an example. Didn't nobody tell me. I wasn't informed. Well, we're going to see what a person in position of authority which recognizes God and submits themselves to the will of God, we're going to see what that person does compared to those who have chosen for whatever the reason is, but who have chosen to lead people in the path of unrighteousness. So let's look at the example of King Josiah. The scripture says in 2 Kings and the 22nd chapter, uh, it makes uh, mention of when uh, King Josiah actually came into office. And it mentions that he was uh, eight years old and that he reigned for 31 years. Uh, but it, it focuses the attention on his acts. Uh, he sent word through one of his uh, scribes, uh, Shaphan. Uh, he sent his scribe to go to the temple and to pay the craftspersons, the carpenters, the builders, the brick masons. He, he, uh, paid, he told Shaphan to go and take the money that was found in the temple and to pay the workers. And then uh, to show that he was not like the previous rulers, uh, he said to pay the workers and they didn't have to take account of it because they were faithful workers. Uh, now, prior to this, money had been coming through the temple. Uh, it was paying those that were leading down the wrong paths. But 
King Josiah didn't say to take an account or to bring the leftover to me, but he said to pay those workers. In the process, the scribe, Shephan, he actually found the book of law. He found the laws that uh, were written on tablets, that were written on scrolls and passed down through generations to govern the people by. Those are those things that people, uh, we sometimes say, I didn't know, uh, that uh, I wasn't informed. So soon as the scribe mentioned it to Josiah, the scripture says that he tore his clothes when he heard what the law of God required and made reference to what was going on. And he was so torn in spirit that he tore his clothes from himself. But his scribe, Shaphan, told him of a woman who was serving as a prophetess. And uh, her name was Hulda, Hulda. And she was uh, serving in Jerusalem. And because Josiah in sincerity and in humility inquired of her as to what the scripture was actually saying. Josiah was pardoned, although Judah in the end still received, still received their just due. But Josiah, the king, those that adhered to the law, they were pardoned. Now, the scripture says it in this manner, and this is the 22nd chapter. I'm reading the uh, 19th verse. Oh, we'll start at the 18th. Because as for the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord in this manner, you shall speak to him, thus says the Lord God of Israel concerning the words which you have heard. Because your heart was tender and you humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard what I spoke against this place and against its inhabitants, that they would become a desolation and a curse, and you tore your clothes and wept before me, I also have heard you, says the Lord. Surely, therefore, I will gather you to your fathers and you shall be gathered to your grave in peace. And your eyes shall not see all the calamity which I will bring upon this place. So they brought back word to the king. Now, we don't have the time to indulge uh, into those two major chapters there, which uh, record the activities or the actions of King Josiah. Second Kings chapter 22 and 23. But it is definitely worth reading because King Josiah, he didn't wait after he was pardoned. You know, sometimes we uh, were slow to action once we uh, have been released from punishment. So we like, Whew. oh man, I escaped it. I'm gonna get, I'm, I'm gonna do better though. I'm gonna get around to it. But, but what King Josiah did was he took action, and his action is recorded in the 23rd chapter. He met with the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. He told them what the Lord said. He didn't just say, this is what I said, but he told them what the Lord said. And then he told them what he was going to do as a result of what the script, what the scrolls have said. He cleaned house. Those priests, those leaders 
who were taking money and who were worshiping idol gods and who were allowing certain sexual acts to take place in the temple, who were allowing child sacrifices to wooden images and gods that were man-made, who were allowing the congregation to engage in recitations in honor of not the creator, but to those that they created from what the creator made. Images made by man. He cleaned house. He took action on those things that displeased God so that someone would be saved from the judgment of God. Now, the text takes us further and in the 14th verse, it talks about that great day of the Lord is near. And we know from uh, 2 Peter, the third chapter, I believe, and it starts at the 9th and the 10th verse, that there are those among us who always talk about that. I've heard that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, right. God is going to come down and he's going to punish us. And we've been hearing that for generations and ain't nothing changed yet. Uh, if we would just exert a little time in reading the scriptures, uh, a lot of times we associate punishment with the things that we are capable of. So we look for God to punish with guns, with uh, uh, demotions, uh, with uh, excommunications, with being isolated, uh, war and battle and, and missiles and such. But God uses his creation to do battle for God. God calls the heavens that he created into order. He uses the water that he made, the wind that he created, the sun. He uses the forces of nature. And a lot of times we, not, we don't make association with the signs of his coming that are right in our midst. So as we close our lesson uh, and it is so involved there are so many different ways to have approached this but we know that the attention span of ourselves is short but I would just uh, uh, recommend uh, to read through all of the texts but that which is the focus of it is how do we remove ourselves from this day of darkness and gloom? And that comes in the key verse. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the land, not the proud, not the arrogant, not those that are ready to do harm and to kill and destroy, but those that are humble. You who do what he commands, seek righteousness, seek humility. Perhaps you will be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. We ask God's blessings upon this lesson as we do on all of them. And we hope that something that we said, something that we lifted uh, would provide the information and the guidance that we need all of us as individuals today, certainly those of the household of faith that would give us guidance and direction and lead us into the paths of righteousness, that those acts that we perform from day to day would be acceptable and pleasing unto God. God bless you and God keep you.